My talk is on this lecture in German. <clears throat> and German is a typical orthography, I would say. It's pretty regular in the reading direction from letter to sound, from grapheme to phonemes. But as most orthographies, it's not so regular in the uh, spelling direction. So it's easy to make spelling errors, but it's pretty difficult to make reading errors, which is quite different, this manifestation, from English, or from French, or from Danish, and even Portuguese, where <coughs> orthographies which are less regular in the direction from grapheme to phonemes. <coughs> so, <coughs> I wonder that nobody mentioned the <coughs> World Health Organization de definition or description of dyslexia, because this is the document that should bind all these different countries together. <coughs> and in, in this compendium of the, <coughs> of the ICD, International Classification of Diseases, ICD number 10, says something about dyslexia, <clears throat> and it links dyslexia, as you see from this quote, to preceding language impairments. And specifically, it <clears throat> points to difficulties with phonological analysis that are at the core of the reading and spelling difficulties. And this definition, <clears throat> and a lot of what you heard in this uh, conference here, is based on English reading and dyslexia research. It's very much Anglo-centric, very much Anglo-centric. And I point you to a recent review of reading and dyslexia research by an Israeli researcher, David Jair, who complained bitterly about basing reading research, reading acquisition and dyslexia on an outlier orthography such as English. Outlier means it's pretty untypical for an alphabetic orthography to be such irregular as English is. <clears throat> so the question is whether what we heard about <coughs> English-based uh, dyslexia research applies to regular orthographies, and there were already some, <coughs> some some hints in the presentation before by, by uh, Elena and also by, <coughs> by, uh, by uh, Jesus, that in Russian or in, in, in Spanish, reading errors are pretty uncommon. <coughs> and the main problem is reading speed, to become a fluent and uh, efficient reader. And I will convince you this is... <coughs> The, the, the true core of dyslexia, at least I try to do. But let, let's look a li little bit back. Where does this phonological and analysis <coughs> cause, uh, problem come from? It came from, <coughs> from people, in, uh, phoneticians at Haskins Laboratories, Isabel Lieberman, Donald Schenkweiler, who really pushed the, the idea that the phoneme, the phoneme is the critical element that has to be accessed and understood and manipulated when you have to learn an alphabetic orthography. Of course, this idea has some plausibility because <coughs> alphabets represent uh, the phonemes of spoken language. And the original version was, oh, this is very unnatural to get at the phoneme level of speech because evolution had programmed the brains to, 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 to perceive and to, uh, to produce spoken language, but to produce and, <coughs> and, and perceive um, words, sentences, and, not, had, and, and nothing has to do with phonemes. Phonemes are pretty unnatural. And the, 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 the story was, Oh, now something very unnatural has to happen in reading research. Something, the, the brain is not equipped for getting to the phoneme. So that is a major stumbling block for all children who have to acquire an alphabetic orthography. And it is a specific problem for, for children with difficulties in learning to read. So is this the case? And my 
my answer will be no. <clears throat> I skip something here. Let us look <coughs> at this study that was done by, uh, by a number of colleagues among Costas Porputas <coughs> who supplied, as I remember correctly, the Greek data. The English data were supplied by Philip Seymour. These are uh, Scottish children. And then you have a, a broad range of European orthographies. And this, we tested these children at the end of first grade. <coughs> and, and they had to read existing words, and they had to read completely novel pseudo-words. So, and what you see here in all these European orthographies, and by the way, this was speeded list reading. So, read as quickly and as accurately as you can. So, and what you see here, <coughs> even for completely novel words, accuracy was always hovering around 90% correct. So basically, the, the children of this <coughs> comparative study had no problem at all with acquisition of the most of the, the critical stumbling block in reading development, that is getting access to the phoneme and <clears throat> decoding new words by putting together the phonemes into syllables and producing uh, a coherent pronunciation. And in the case of words, of course, the, it was easier for them than for completely new words. So, but the English are, are completely the outlier here. It took them about three years to get to the level where, the, where all these, these other kids were after seven or eight months of reading instruction. And I refer you specifically to Italian data from Giuseppe Cosso, who showed that after three or four months of reading instruction in Italy, these children, most of the normally developing children, had no difficulty with reading accuracy in the sense of decoding uh, new words. He even showed that, meant that he presented the case of a mentally retarded child who was a perfect reader of Italian without understanding too much of what he was uh, reading about. So this story, there's a major stumbling block that <coughs> poses a problem for all and a specific problem, I think, has to put in question. So, I skip again a bit of data. Now let us look at dyslexic uh, children. And <coughs> my <coughs> colleague Karin Landal in Salzburg and uh, Joe Ziegler here in, in, in France, uh, we, did, we, comp we studied um, dyslexic children <coughs> in, in London and uh, dyslexic children in, uh, in Salzburg in the case of, uh, of the Landau study. And these children were about 10 to 11 years old. And what you see here, accuracy was not a problem for these dyslexic kids. And those are not for the, for the other uh, dyslexic group uh, studied by Joe Ziegler. But it was a major problem, as we all know, for, <coughs> for English dyslexic children. And by the way, there is a fundamental difference how the reading tests work for English and for in, 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 in regular orthographies. It would be completely impossible to use English reading tests, which are basically <coughs> A number uh, of correctly read words, and when you, <coughs> you give them a graded list of words, and when they fail on six words or so uh, in a row, then you say, okay, this is the reading level of the child, and you look up what this means in, 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 in terms of percentiles. You simply can't this do in regular orthographies. You have to rely on speed as the main measure of a reading problem. So, in English, select children because of a word decoding problem without consideration of speed. In all regular orthographies, you can't do this. You select them via speed. So that, 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 should, you make, uh, <coughs> that should make you think about this, this, this really crucial difference between 
uh, irregular, inconsistent orthography and a consistent one. Of course, what you can't do in German, you can't test their spelling. As I said, spelling is more difficult reading, so they, they can, uh, they produce quite a number of uh, spelling errors. Of course, they do. But my focus here is on reading, which I think is the most crucial thing anyway. So let us, <coughs> to, to, to illustrate this a bit from Karin Landau's data, we, we, among the, the items to be read were the German words character and the English word character. The nice thing about German and English comparison is that you can use nearly the same words in, for, for English and German. And the, these are the reading errors committed by the, <coughs> by the Austrian dyslexic kids. Most of them close to, the, to, 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 to be correct, but not exactly. But look what the, what the English did. <coughs> the majority of, of these kids misread this word, from, uh, ranging from, uh, from word guesses like calendar, calculator, and so on. Some kids simply refused to read this, produced a, a response. And then some of them produced um, uh, 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 nonsense words like this. So, but now let me come to, to the issue. What is the problem <coughs> for the German dyslexic cases? It is speed. This <coughs> is the, 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 uh, the time to read a word on average. It's about one, nearly two seconds to read a word like this compared to the controls who need less than a second to read such a word. So the reading time is three times as long for the dyslexic kids than for the normal kids. So it's a profound difficulty with, 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 with a lot of implications for text reading, for school-based exercises, and so on. So and the problem is a, is a pervasive one. It is for text reading. This is <coughs> the main of the, of the dyslexic readers uh, in standard deviations compared to the, uh, to the, to the controls. This, this minus four means the mean of the, of the dyslexic readers is about four standard deviations below the mean of the control. And in, 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 in absolute terms, it means that their speed, the, 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 the reading time required by them is about two to three times more than the uh, reading time of the, of the controls. And it's a very persistent problem. If you select the, 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 the slowest reader in the middle of second grade and follow them up to the end of their um, uh, uh, obligatory schooling, then you see they do not improve. They actually become... Uh, relatively worse compared to the, uh, to the norm. And it's a problem hard to remediate. We trained <clears throat> a group of nine-year-olds day by day on a limited number of words until we got the reading speed for this limited number of words down to the, to the level of the controls. But after one week and after two weeks on the trained word, they lost most of their speed and there was hardly any transfer to, uh, to similar words. <clears throat> so it is a serious problem, it is a persistent problem, it is a pervasive problem, and it is a serious one in, 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 in practical terms. So the, the conclusion from this section is accurate self-relying phonological word decoding does not pose the major problem, at least not for the large majority of children with the uh, difficulty I, 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 I told you. There is a very small number of children in grade one who really suffer from something like a phonological word decoding problem, and the problem is a blending problem. For example, they, they have really a difficulty to put together the sounds of the letters. If you show them the word mama, M-A-M-A, -A, they, they say you the, the letter sounds, M-A-M-A. -A. By, by, by the way, this is, the, this is the, the way our children are taught. They do not learn, actually they are prevented from learning the letter names. 
what they should learn and what they are really exposed to are the letter sounds, like mm, ah, mm, ah, which makes planting much easier. But for a very small number of children, it's very difficult for them to plant. And to plant, <laughs> that sounds easy, planting, but actually what you have to do is you, you have to have access to existing syllables in your uh, phonological lexicon for appropriate planting, because you can't simply plant by ma, ma, ma. You have to say ma, ma, mama. So this is a problem that, that's constantly overlooked because everyone focuses on analysis, analysis. The problem is to get the access to phonology in, in the, uh, from the letter sounds. So actually, <laughs> I started with the World Health Organization definition, but the, 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 the Dutch Health Council came up with a much more appropriate definition of dyslexia. Automatization, speed of word identification, and uh, spelling does not develop what does so with great difficulty. <clears throat> so there is no mentioning of, uh, of uh, phonological decoding as the main problem because the Dutch children also have little difficulty with that. And there is also no mention of phonetic spelling errors, because when you look at their spelling, you always see what, what the word was they wanted to spell. It's orthographically incorrect, but it is nearly always phonetically acceptable. Some very few children have problem in grade one to acquire this, but the large majority of the so-called dyslexic children have not. So let's have a, 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 I'm a psychologist, cognitive psychologist, so I'm interested on, on the cognitive processes underlying this fluency problem. <clears throat> and what a, what, what a closer look reveals is that <clears throat> even in, in English and in German, the, <clears throat> the, 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 the word reading time of a dyslexic readers exhibit a massive, massive word length effect. The longer the words become in terms of three, four, five, six letters, it doesn't make any difference for control children. There's hardly any increase of reading time. They look at the word and give you the, <coughs> give you the response, the reading response. But what these kids do, they are very slow already for three letter words. And with each, additional letter, it increases by a substantial <coughs> number. So what this means, they rely on a serial, effortful, phonological decoding strategy <coughs> when, when competent readers do it in uh, uh, do a kind of whole word recognition, seeing the letters uh, at once. <coughs> this is the same for Italian children. But by the way, look, it scaled uh, similarly. So the Italians are generally much faster than the English or the uh, German kids uh, because of the, of the very simple syllable structure of, uh, of Italian. And this also applies to, uh, to Dutch. <coughs> and oh, I have to skip. So let me come to a kind of interim conclusion. This is the, 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 the quite well-known dual root model of uh, visual word processing. You have two roots. One, the direct root, you recognize a word immediately with a, 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 a memory of the visual words in your lexicon, and, and from there you go to uh, phonology and speech output. Or you, and this is called a lexical route, or it could be called a visual route, and this here is the uh, serial decoding route, grapheme, phoneme, <coughs> transcoding. And my, my explanation of the, of the very uh, slow reading of our <coughs> problematic readers is, they have a problem in building up the orthographic lexicon. They have stored fewer, uh, word representations that would allow them immediate recognition. But then they have a problem, 
even when they have stored a word in the orthographic lexicon, the speed of access to phonology is slow. <clears throat> and they show this here. <coughs> these are eye movement data. And these are now words <clears throat> where even our dyslexic adolescence readers uh, exhibited only a single fixation on these words. For quite a number of words, the, the, uh, the, uh, the exhibited more than one fixation. And the longer the word, the more fixations. But here, only one fixation. But still, independent from the length of the word, and still one fixation, the reading time is much worse than those of the uh, controls. So my general point is, here is a problem in storage of orthographic word patterns, but there is a, a problem here and a problem here in getting from the visual input from graphemes to phonemes or from the orthographic pattern to the phonological lexicon. So basically, it's a speed problem from vision to phonology. That is my main claim. So, I agree basically with the Dutch, but now I give you a short overview what kind of associated or non-associated cognitive impairments go with this reading speed problem. And to make a, a long a story short, we, we have done a, a lot of studies because we were interested in the underlying core deficit. I can tell you, we found no evidence, not at all, for <coughs> the magnocellular dysfunctions John Stein talked about. Sorry to say that, but we used exactly their uh, coherent motion detection task, exactly the same task in Oxford. The thresholds were exactly the same as in Oxford. The only difference was, it was that the artists lexic were completely fine on this task. Also on an on a, uh, on a auditory magnocellular task, no problem at all. No problem with speech perception in noise. No problem with phonemic analysis when you look at their, uh, at their writing, pseudo-word writing, their phonetic transcriptions are fully acceptable when, it, when you look at the writing. And also, most importantly, actually, there is no difficulty with visual string processing, no speed deficit on the, with vision, and no difficulty with, <coughs> with speech processing. The difficulty comes when you use task where, is a, where, where there is a visual input and a verbal output, then they are slow. This is an example of a visual task we, we used with dyslexic readers. It's, you, you may look it up in vision research. They see a target letter, which is followed by a string of letters, and they have to decide whether the target is in the string. And what you see here is the reaction time, and the dyslexics are in red, and you see their reaction times tend to be faster, faster for visual string processing than the controls. So no visual problem there. So let me now <coughs> come to the point. What you see in 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 quite a number of <coughs> books now, uh, quite uh, well known is the, is the Shevitz uh, book on overcoming dyslexia, and they have a kind of summary of their brain research there. Where is the problem in the brain? It's in the left hemisphere, and it's in this temporal parietal posterior language areas of the brain. And what do these posterior language areas do? They are involved in phonological word decoding. In phonological word decoding are they involved. So this is something our kids can do pretty well. So where is their problem? 
it's useful to look at acquired dyslexia. And there are cases after brain lesions affecting <coughs> the so-called ventral visual pathway, that is the, the pathway from the occipital lobe at the, at the, at the bottom of the brain <coughs> uh, down uh, to, the, to the temporal lobe. And what you see here, these <coughs> readers who before suffering from this lesion, the, the showed no length effect at all after the lesion. The, the reading difficulty is very similar to what I showed you for our dyslexic kids. They, show, they are much slower and they show this indicative length effect. Right, I will come to the end. So we used a task in the scanner, kind of simple word processing task. It was a phonological lexical decision task. Children simply had to say, does this sound like an existing word? And they saw a word like this. Yes, of course, it sounds like a word. They saw an unfamiliar uh, orthographic pattern, but it sounds like a word, yes. And, and of course, no responses. So where is the, <coughs> where are the, where is the, 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 this, the brain dysfunction of the dyslexic kids. <clears throat> of course, up the, in, even in the scanner, they were much slower than the normal readers. But look here, here is the, here is the temporal parietal uh, junction. That is considered by the Shabitzes and so on as the main dysfunction which prevents adequate phonological decoding. Actually, in the normal readers, there's absolutely no activation here and also, in the, and because when there is no activation here, there can be no deficit <coughs> in, uh, by, the, uh, by the dyslexic readers. But of course, there's a lot of activation in the occipital lobe stretching forward into the temporal lobe, and there is activation in left frontal language areas, which are <coughs> involved in producing language. So, and now let us look at the, at the group And what you see here, the brain activation looks pretty similar <coughs> in the uh, non-impaired readers and in the dyslexic readers. What is striking here is the, is the much higher activation at these left frontal um, motor regions. <coughs> and <coughs> uh, in green, here you see the, the overactivations compared to, uh, the, dyslexia, uh, to, to the uh, controls. And in red, you see the underactivation shown by the dyslexic readers. And what you see here is basically the brains of the dyslexic readers are overactivated in quite a number of areas. They are only underactivated in this left temporal, <coughs> in this left occipital temporal region. This is exactly the same region where the acquired dyslexia cases suffer the lesion. So it seems <clears throat> that there's a commonality between developmental dyslexia and acquired letter by letter reading in this critical area. And this critical area by French researchers Tehan and Laurent Cohen occupies the so-called visual word form area, which <coughs> the French group showed that this is the critical area which links the visual input to the, to the language areas. So <clears throat> the basic problem is to, to, to get from here to there. So let me summarize. <clears throat> With respect to manifestation, Believe more in the Dutch definition of dyslexia than in the World Health Organization of dyslexia, which is so anglo-centric. With respect to the proximal underlying <coughs> problems, it's orthographic word storage that poses a problem, and it is the speed to get from <coughs> From, from, from vision to phonology, which poses the problem. It's not phonological analysis. It's the speed getting to phonology. And getting to phonology, not in the receptive brain regions, but in the frontal brain regions, where the, in the output regions. 
And with respect to the cognitive impairments, <coughs> no visual <coughs> strength processing uh, deficits. That's important to, 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 to point out because an obvious thing would be, oh yes, the, the, whenever a letter strength pops up, they are slow in, in, in processing it. And no low level visual or auditory uh, dysfunctions. So, and with respect to the brain, no dysfunction in the posterior language areas, which play a critical role in uh, English-based dyslexia research, but a dysfunction of the visual word form area in the left ventral visual stream that connects up to uh, phonology. Thank you.